This week on Lucky Fish, I do some surgery on Stuart's knees. Stu discusses polar diagrams. One of our engines dies, and I teach the captain a few tricks. After a short stop at Long Island to clear into the Bahamas, we were anxious to find the quickest route to Florida. Hey man, what's up? Hi, could we get a bit of fuel please? Uh, diesel? With perfect weather and a 15 knot southeasterly, we bid farewell to the quaint Stalamaris Marina. Without any internet or any sailors to talk to at Stalamaris, we set out on the 33 mile route to Georgetown. Well, it's nice conditions for the crossing from Long Island to Georgetown. We left Long Island at 9, at uh, 10 o'clock this morning. We're just off the banks at the moment and we'll be crossing back into them quite soon. <laughs> how's, it, how's it going, surgeon? <laughs> What are you doing, honey? Sterilizing my hand. Why are you sterilizing your hand? To squeeze. To squeeze. To squeeze your lips. Better explain, I suppose, what this is all about. Not the prettiest sight, but uh, the thing about handling the Tiki 38 is you do spend a bit of time on your knees around the foresail area on the winch and doing other things to stabilize yourself when it's pitching around so your knees are quite an important part of the whole uh, sail handling and boat handling side of things and i've had a few knee problems i've always had really bad knees swabs. alcohol swabs yeah ouch i quite liked um, knee pads when i discovered them but rather stupidly on the crossing up to Long Island I left them on one night while I was sleeping off watch and I right. uh, left them on all night. No, that needle's really sharp and it's very good. Right, eh? Just being brave for the camera. <laughs> yeah, so I left the knee pads on for the night and uh, some of that's an infection got into the skin. It looks like some boils grew underneath the knee pad. I think something else nice. Gentle. And they've, uh, they tend to look, look pretty nasty. But they've put my knees out of commission, so I'm just moving around on the deck on my bum like a crab at the moment. <laughs> it's not ideal. <laughs> but it's not going to take much to get this dried out and cleaned up, I hope. Uh, but there's a lesson learned there. You can have too much of a good thing. <laughs> you don't leave your knee pads on all night. Pretty surprised it got infected so quick. Yeah, be gentle. Which one? Oh one. god, you, yeah. Which one next? You, um, you want the big ones? Right? Yeah, go for the big ones. Nice and gentle to start with. Get it, just yeah. get it. Go! Do it. Alright. Well, I can tell you three disparin and a rum and milk help. And a good nurse. Mm -hmm. Who knows what she's doing? I 
Good well done, thank you. Good old Dettol, can't beat it. Yeah, that's really good stuff. <laughs> Look at you, <laughs> one of these people is happy. I will always remember the trip from Long Island to Georgetown. <laughs> Which you're paying. The surgery. <laughs> but you're a good nurse, so thank you. We're still sailing, doing four and a half knots or so. In 12 knots of breeze. It's so interesting watching the difference between slight changes in the true wind angle and what it does to the apparent wind and what it does to the speed of the boat. As long as we're slightly around, I guess, broad reaching or slightly uh, tighter than broad, we're easily doing half the wind speed, but here we've got the true wind, I guess, just a little bit aft of broad reaching, and we're, ba we're barely making uh, half wind speed. Boat speed here sitting around 5, true wind speed sitting around 12 or so. So, yeah, that's interesting. You hear a lot of people quoting the fact that their boat will do half the wind speed and all that, but gee, there's a lot more to it than just that. Well, there is a lot more to it. While the Tiki 38 will regularly do half the wind speed, it depends on both the wind strength and point of sail, which is the angle of true wind from the bow. Polar diagrams show the theoretical boat speeds on all points of sail in a range of true wind speeds. For many boats, the point of sail at which the maximum speed is attained increases as the wind speed increases. So, for our Tiki to do half the wind speed, she needs to be sailing around 90 to 110 degrees to the wind in 10 knots and around 130 to 150 degrees to the wind in 20 knots. At those points she'll often go faster than half the wind speed. How's that? What are you doing? You're too high. Too high. Down. Yep. Yeah, that's better. Still a bit high, 10 degrees. Yeah, still 10 degrees high. Looks like I might need a bit more. I'm starting to. <laughs> Slowly coming down. Yeah, because our bearing to waypoint is getting smaller as we stay too high. And we're down to 252. We should be steering now. Boat still barreling along at 270. Wind could be changing, yeah. Veering and carrying us higher. There it goes. It's starting to come down now. There we go, she's starting to come onto course. I think we'll leave it at that for now and just keep an eye on it. The entry back onto the banks past Fowl Quay couldn't have been easier. The explorer charts have dotted lines showing the way, and combined with a sharp lookout, there really is little to go wrong. Our confidence in these dotted lines grew and grew as we became acquainted with them. Pretty soon we were anchored in front of Georgetown. What are you offering? I see a beer in Matara. Stag too, that's yummy. Stags. Yo. Cheers. Mm-mm. Icy cold. Can't beat refrigeration. <laughs> I love it. Time to blow up the tacker cat after nearly one year in storage. So far so good. 
it looks fine, you know, fresh water rinse before we packed it, there's no mould on it. Or is it hard enough? You got a firm, yeah? <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> well, you, you check it for firmness, honey, and when you're happy with it, you stop pumping, okay? We planned a two-day stay in Georgetown to provision and plan our route to Fort Myers. That would leave us nine days to make it to the Hui. Plenty of time if nothing went wrong. You got it. Have a look at that little boat. It's cute, isn't it? Look at that little schooner. Or not. That is so cute. Okay, on with the motor. We'll stick the motor on. <laughs> Come on, honey, pop the motor on. We inflated the dinghy. Take a cat in the Bahama. Went to shore for provisioning and a SIM card. And enjoyed some delicious home cooking. How's it going down here? Crumb pasta. Crumb pasta, my goodness. Our friends on the French skinny hulled cat, they moved across to the other side. Uh, they got over, they over to uh, Duck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, if you're in the Eczemas, <laughs> it would seem to be practical to go to a French beach. Girl, she got the good guy, sensible. And? It goes to the beach. Mm -hmm. It's well, tomorrow. It's, it's tomorrow. To the beach. I took you shopping today. Yeah. We went shopping. Food shopping. Food shopping. Yeah, <laughs> I get really excited. <laughs> Alright, All right. We even had time to record the boat tour videos, parts one and two. Go. Should I read like that? Yeah, you can go. Okay, this is just the practice, okay? Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi guys. <laughs> hey. Just as we were preparing to leave, the port engine wouldn't start. We had serviced the carburetor on the starboard engine back in Grenada when the same thing had happened, so we figured this was most likely the problem. We tested the sparks and found them to be good, so we took the carby ashore for servicing. The first two mechanics we tried said they were booked for a week and besides weren't interested in small engines. Finally, we found a place a few miles south of Georgetown. So we're just moving the boat from Georgetown. We've been there three nights, and uh, rather than stay a fourth night, we thought we'd move just over the other side to one of the keys. Are so we moving from there to, to there? there. <laughs> and uh, we will be going back there in the morning to go and click our carburetor for the port engine. And also, uh, as long as the engine has got the problems, so... Um, <laughs> pain in the neck, but those knee pads, uh, in the end, I ended up with um, quite infected uh, sores, enough detail, and we went to the little medical clinic here. Well, it's actually quite a large medical clinic, with only a few patients. Fantastic. 30 US dollars for a consultation. Tetanus shop. A lot of antibiotics and a prescription to go back in the morning and collect some more antibiotics to uh, get rid of this infection. Not a big deal, but a bit of a pain in the neck. There's no swimming for me anyway. Fancy coming to the Exumas and not being able to get your knees wet. How is it sailing in Exuma? It's really paradise found this place. We don't know anything about it. We've just seen the southern end of it, but my goodness. It's more like this, it's uh, probably a sailor's heaven, another one in the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a wrist 
Okay. Yeah. Probably a lot of boaties go there. Yeah. Wanna anchor here and go check check it out tonight? Just to clear well, enough of him. Yesterday, and they've just serviced it for us. Let's hope it's done the trick. It's a mysterious little place. We brought the yacht down and anchored off in a couple of metres of water about half a mile away, and then brought the dinghy in across about half a metre of water. <laughs> but uh, it looks like this place is mostly boat storage and outboard engine servicing. So nice to get this engine going again. Let's hope it's the end of our engine problems lesson learned when you do a service on a Yamaha annual service probably pays to strip the carbies as well <laughs> not a lot of work involved in doing it we'll see we'll see let me see your outfit my uh, knee proof jeans After collecting the carby, we returned to the boat, moved over to anchor behind Elizabeth Island to refit it and test the engine. We can go to it wouldn't start. We connected it back up to the engine and nothing happened. Same, same, same bloody. Same symptoms, isn't it? Same symptoms. Oh, you look so happy. Well, we've got a lot to celebrate tonight. Zaya got the port engine running. Can you believe it? Well, you probably can. I can't believe it. I was all ready to give up and we heard that engine fire into life. <laughs> it was after many, many hours of contained frustration. But only outboards can drive you to the limit and uh, Zaya's found that you can go beyond that limit and uh, keep persevering and lo and behold it's running like a Swiss watch now so we've got two engines and we're back on track and we're going to get moving in the morning but thank you what is that? In the meantime, you have are you offering me that up? wine or are you just no. obscuring the camera with it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Toasting to you? Oh, that's lovely. Well, I'm toasting to you, honey. You're the star mm -hmm. tonight. Now, there's a lot of, lot of lessons to learn about um, persevering with problems and seeing them through. I had a lot of voodoo about outboard motors. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, you know, having played with them and not being able to solve solutions and following all the logic, you know, fuel, spark, can't be much more to it than that, but they managed to elude you. But I let all that go tonight, and um, Zai just said, look, let's dig deeper, let's just unscrew this, let's unscrew that. I'm just going, no, come on, let's just give it to an expert. That expert is busy for another week or so. We can't wait another week. No, no, we can't wait another week. So just better dig into it, isn't it? Dig into it. Well, we dug into it, and whatever we did, um, it worked. It fired after... 20 or 30 times on the starter at least, spread over about 5 hours after changing this, changing that. Not a bang, not a fire from any of the cylinders. Yeah, it was frustrating. Spark was good, fuel was seemed okay. But something was missing and... Yeah, uh, it's like uh, not enough fuel coming not enough to fuel the coming. spark for some no. reason. We're, we're I love that side of the whole Mongolian culture, which is just don't give up because there's no one there to help you, and it's so applicable Get to on this with lifestyle. It and just do it, you know. Don't just wait for expert. There's no expert there's in no this experts. freaking island. <laughs> no, well, no, even there is. They're not interested on your 9.9. .9. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this is the funny thing. I mean, we've come here and it's pretty much a, a powerboat of culture. Um, you know, uh, unless you've got 40 horses or more, then no one's interested. Uh, because the outboards that we run are just too small and fiddly and there's not enough money in them, <laughs> we've learned. If you've got 225 horsepower, maybe we'll take the engine cover off and have a look. But um, that's yeah, been a 9. bit of an education. 9.9 9 is just fiddly shit and they're not really interested. They're not even interested, buddy. Yeah, which Sorry. is fair enough. <laughs> but, um, but uh, you know, the guy the guy at Brown's was good. He said, look, I'm not going to leave you in the lurch. And he did. He stripped down our carby. We took it off, took it to him. And uh, we could have stripped it ourselves now that we know what to do. There's not a lot to it. Just remember where all the bits go back. Um, but clean the jets and clean all the gunk out. We could have done it, but I was pretty happy to leave it to an expert. And he knocked it over for 60 bucks. That's great. However, we connected it back up to the engine and nothing happened. Same. Same, same bloody. Same symptoms, isn't it? Same symptoms. So, uh, and it did, did appear like we'd just fixed the wrong problem. It certainly felt like there was another problem there that we hadn't addressed and it felt like it was spark, but we had good strong spark. So. In the end we probably weren't getting enough fuel into the new carby, it was probably as simple as that. It was a new carby straight off the bench. We pumped and pumped and pumped, it looked like there was plenty of fuel going through the filter, but not even a bang out of it. And then I guess it was about the 11th and a half hour Zaya says, um, can I give it one more start <laughs> after umpteen times? And I said, yes, honey, start it. But if it doesn't fire again, then uh, please agree that we just put the engine cover back on. Go, go to bed tonight, put it behind us and leave it to the expert in the morning. And she said, yes. And do you know she started that bloody engine and it fired and ran? <laughs> I can't believe it. I still can't believe it. After all the odds said there was no way it was going to go, it fired. Well, it felt like magic. It was Mongolian magic again. And it was because it pushed me beyond what I would have done with that damn motor. But now I know that, well, we know that bloody motor back to front. We know these 9.9s. We know everything they do. There's probably a few more surprises in store, but... We're probably 90% of the way there now, and that's great because you don't have a service station on the side of the road on a yacht, just as you don't have one in Mongolia when you're out in the countryside. And there, that resourcefulness is something that's built into the people, and so it's such a pleasure to have those resourceful people on this boat at times. Lots for sailors to learn from Mongolians, and vice versa. Works both ways. Right. What have you got to add, madam? Anything? I don't know. Where's the camera? Anyway, I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> celebrating, your moment, <laughs> celebrating your moment in the sun, yeah? <laughs> You're never going to let that go to air. So don't even fool me. No. <laughs> Alright. See you guys. See you later. <laughs> Can you see me? <laughs> Next week on Lucky Fish. We fly the drone for the first time, choose an unconventional route to Florida, almost lose the drone, and heave to south of Andros Island. If you enjoy our videos, please like and subscribe. Thank you to all our wonderful patrons for supporting our videos. And thank you for watching. Oh, thank goodness all that's over. Oh, it's not. Oh, what are you doing now? Mm. Oh, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> Done! I had to watch 65 episodes before I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to the bar or the beach? Bye.